Hello, football fans. Welcome back to Goal Side. It's the biggest stage on the footballing landscape, a competition that is desired by every single nation across the world in hopes of having their name added to a list of very exclusive teams which will be remembered for all time. All the best footballers of the past have either had a shot at winning it, have won it, or have retired from football regretting not having achieved this wonderful coveted prize that makes true players legendary. The FIFA World Cup, an award which is the peak of a footballer's dream of glory and the greatest measuring stick for a player's career. Every four years, the World Cup is hosted in a chosen nation or group of nations, with the competition becoming fierce as each of the potential destinations battles its competitors to earn the right of being the home of that particular installment of the competition. Famous memories come to mind, the infamous Maracanazo, in which the great Brazilian side of 1950 celebrated too early and was hit in the face by the shocking victory of a determined Uruguay in front of 200,000 fans, Diego Maradona's godlike goal of the century against England in 1986, Jeff Hurst being picked up by his England teammates in 1966 for a photo that would become synonymous with English football, and Zinedine Zidane's headbutt in 2006. All of these special moments, as well as the others that are too many to name, have made the World Cup memorable for even the least football-friendly person in every household. It's important to note, however, that as amazing as each installment of this competition has been, much of it has depended on how good the venue was at the time and how much the host nation loved the beautiful game. For example, Brazil, host of two World Cups in 1950 and 2014, is known as the place where football was perfected, and most of the populace loves the game. France and Italy, meanwhile, are home to some of the most interesting legends in the game, Argentina, Germany, and England, likewise. This leads us to one of the biggest mysteries currently confusing many loyal football fans. How is it that Qatar, a nation which has never been big on football, which is quite far away from every important league in Europe, America, and Asia, which is known for its scorching hot temperatures and hostile environment for certain members of society, is about to host the 2022 World Cup? Many have been the controversy since FIFA gave the announcement in 2010, starting with the words of ex-president Sepp Blatter, who was later found guilty of corruption through bribery and money laundering. FIFA considered that the Arab world deserved to host its own World Cup. This was a strange proposition to most. Arab countries have never typically been associated with football, and they've rarely even participated in the FIFA World Cup at all. Still, it would take more than just the words of the organization's president to make the bid a reality, so few believe Qatar would get anywhere with their sudden hopes of being World Cup hosts. The bidding processes for the 2018 and 2022 FIFA World Cups began in March of 2009, in which 11 bids were presented by 13 countries. It was decided at some point during the process that, according to rotation rules which guarantee that two consecutive World Cups aren't held on the same continent, Africa would be ineligible for the 2018 World Cup, and South America for both, leaving European, Asian, North American, and Oceanic countries as potential hosts. Another rule came in place stating that European nations would be hosts for the 2018 competition and that 2022 would allow countries from any other continents to participate. The bids began to arrive for both editions of the World Cup. Belgium and the Netherlands placed a joint bid, as did Portugal and Spain, and both England and Russia completed the bids for the nations that would fight for the 2018 World Cup. We know how the story ends here, since we already got to enjoy the competition take place in Russia. But the story gets even more interesting in terms of the 2022 World Cup. The bids came from Australia, Japan, South Korea, United States, and of course, Qatar. To be honest, nobody expected the US to lose, and even if they did, debutants Australia would step in and sweep the results. Still, there were doubts, and the favorites weren't looking as strong as they could have. To begin with, Australia seemed to have issues with its other sports if the World Cup was to take place. Ridiculously, both the Australian Football League and National Rugby League, which, come on, are irrelevant alongside football, complained about the possibility of the World Cup disrupting their seasons and forcing them to reschedule, and many voters believed that certain factors, such as the distance from other continents, weren't going to work out for an event of that magnitude. Japan, meanwhile, despite making huge announcements on what they would provide for the Cup if they were chosen, such as real-time 3D coverage of the games, holographic replays, and microphones embedded under the pitch for added realism, were unable to win the voting process, as voters considered that the World Cup in 2002 had been too recent. The same applied with South Korea, who also represented the 2002 venue. This left the top favorite and the underdog. The United States committee was probably looking down at Qatar with smiles by this point. After all, the massive nation has shown its dedication to sporting venues, possessing 70 stadiums which could be used in the tournament, and dozens of cities which would easily accommodate the millions of fans which would travel across the nation and world to watch each game. Qatar, meanwhile, was a hot and hostile country smaller than 47 of the 50 American states and was only just completing the stadiums necessary for the competition. It had no chance, right? Amazingly, the final votes determined the contrary. 
Qatar defeated the United States 14 to 8, with US ex President Bill Clinton famously remarking that FIFA had just wanted to give the decision to somebody who had never had it before, although he ignored the fact that Australia hadn't hosted a World Cup before either. The reactions were immediate and significant. The Qatari people took to the streets to celebrate, the 1.7 million inhabitants of the small nation feeling overjoyed at the idea of hosting the most important football event in the world after having beaten the most powerful nation on the planet to the prize. The Iranian president of the time, the controversial Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, is remembered for offering help to Qatar with the intention of creating cooperation between the Middle East. Fury spread among the committees who had lost the bidding process. England and the U.S. were very transparent about their disappointment, and the press in both countries began campaigns against the results. The words corruption and vote buying were mentioned more than once, and both Russia and Qatar were accused of having used their commodity and energy industry finances to tip the balance in their favor. ESPN.com seemed to pinpoint the exact cause of Qatar's victory, stating that a youth football development program financed by Qatar named Football Dreams helped them earn the result. Explaining further, ESPN stated that they had discovered that six of the representatives of Football Dreams were also on the FIFA Executive Committee, and that this was highly influential in terms of results. To make matters much more serious, the scandal surrounding FIFA erupted at around this point, with both Bayern Munich's president Uli Hoeneß and England's Lord Treisman talking of having personally witnessed cases of corrupt payments or dubious offers to sell votes, which led FIFA to investigate further. It would be only six months after Qatar's victory in May of 2011 when it was reported that committee members Issa Hayatou and Jacques Anouma were paid $1.5 million in exchange for votes in favor of Qatar. The astounding 2015 FIFA corruption case would later put the situation under an even closer scrutiny, but that's another story. In the end, to matters a bit shorter, Qatar won the right to host the 2022 World Cup and kept it despite the controversies. Bit the issues don't end there, unfortunately. It would be nice to just let bygones be bygones and just move on with accepting that the small Middle Eastern country was going to be the next nation to successfully host the biggest football tournament in the world. But things were only about to get uglier. To begin with, FIFA initially acted as if the heat would not be a problem at the Cup, despite temperatures hitting up to 50 degrees Celsius during the summer months, in which football players have been known to suffer from exhaustion and dehydration, and to which the human body has great trouble getting used to, unlike colder temperatures took a study from a formal inspection team to finally get FIFA to reconsider the summer dates for the tournament, and it has now been moved to the winter, between November and December of 2022 to be exact. Unfortunately, this has had its own consequences. The 2023 Africa Cup of Nations had to be moved from January to June. The 2022-23 Premier League season, a competition known for not having a winter break, will be completely rescheduled, and the NFL season will have to be interrupted halfway through. But it isn't just the climate which worries fans and players alike. Apparently, migrant workers were brought in the thousands to help complete the construction of the World Cup-related infrastructure. Most of these workers are sponsored by a Qatari national, and this has led many to be abused and threatened, most of them unable to complain or resign from their positions due to Qatari law. Wages and security measures have been sadly disregarded, and workers are promised a fantasy of wealth before heading out that turns out to be a massive lie. Furthermore, the death of many of these workers and horrible living conditions add up to a blatant violation of human rights in the construction of the stadiums involved in this tournament. LGBT groups have expressed their worry on Qatar representing a traditionally Muslim country, which has also imposed a ban on homosexuality altogether, along with Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and the United Arab Emirates and Oman. Homosexuality is illegal in Qatar and can be punishable by death. According to Qatar, however, members of the LGBT community will be welcomed into the nation for as long as the World Cup takes place and will be free to express themselves freely without fear of punishment. Alcohol and the illegality of its consumption in Qatar was another reason to worry for tourists planning to visit the nation in the winter of 2022. Ironically, Qatar's chief executive in terms of the World Cup bid, Hassan Abdullah Al Thawadi, stated that specific zones would be created where alcohol could be bought and consumed, contradicting legislative and religious laws that have been put in place for many years. It seems that money is worth more than tradition, huh? In any case, all of the trouble surrounding the 2022 World Cup in Qatar have simply not been enough to change the minds of the men and women within FIFA's organization, and we're definitely going to see the tournament go forward. Still one wonders just how smoothly the event will transpire, considering that the nation is still behind the rest of the world in terms of freedom and open-mindedness. Let's hope that everything goes well, and that another scary factor which we didn't mention, the potential for terrorism, doesn't show its ugly face in this much-awaited event. This has been all on Qatar's shocking selection as the host nation for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to subscribe to Goal Side. We'll see you in the next video.